Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to answer a viewer question. We are going to talk about balancing reverse ladders for kettlebell strength training. We made a previous video where we talked about how to tell when you were jumping weights. The question in the previous video was moving from four sets of five and five, trying to get to six sets of five and five, and if you failed, we set up a decision tree on what you would do. Basically, we took four times five, we took our sets times our reps, we calculated a total amount of work, we multiplied it by our weight, and then we balanced it with a 60 and an 80% number based on reps. If you're doing classic strength training reps, then if we assume five reps was our 100%, then 60% of that would be three and 40% of that would be four. Thus our classic strength training protocols of sets of three, sets of four, and sets of five. Somebody asked about how you would expand that into reverse ladders for single arm clean and press training. So let's just display the math on this fairly simply. So let's assume that we're doing a reverse ladder. For those of you who don't know, a reverse ladder is where you start hard and you make it easy over time. The ladder has rungs. Five left, five right, four left, four right, three left, three right, two left, two right, one left, one right. The point of a reverse ladder is that it gets easier over time so you are more likely to succeed instead of a normal ladder which goes up, which would be the other way. You would go one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. I always prefer the reverse ladder because you are more likely to succeed because it gets easier as you go. Training for success is something we would like to do in all forms of training. If we wanted to figure out how to jump weights, then we would consider a couple of things here. We would do the same thing that we did before, and we would take our number of sets times our number of reps. The difference is, instead of just being one set of five this time, like it was last time, last time it was say four sets of five left, five right, we have descending sets. But because you're not putting the weight down, you're still time under tension the entire time, we consider this to be one work set for a reverse ladder. You have to specify that it has to be for a reverse ladder. So five plus four plus three plus two plus one is 15. So we end up with 15 reps on each side, which is really 30 reps. And then we would multiply that by our number of sets, which would give us 75 total reps on each side or 150 reps total for the reverse ladder. If your reverse ladder has different numbers, just add it up and do the math. We would then find our work capacity, 16 times 150. Easy way to do that in your head is to turn the 16 into a 10, multiply it by 150, get 1500, take six, multiply it by 150, get 900, add those together, get our work capacity, which is 2,400 kilograms moved for this specific scenario. In order to make this interesting, let's make this a 20K. 20K instead of the 16K that we had. And if we were going to try to match the work capacity with a 20K, how would we do it? We would take our work capacity, let's say 2,400, and we would divide it by our new weight, 20K. It goes in there, let's say 400, basic, standard, long division. Uh, 20 times 20 is 400, so our new goal would be 120 reps. Instead of 150 reps, we would have 120 reps. So now we know that 16K at 150 reps equals 20K at 120 reps. Pretty simple. Now we have to figure out how we're going to set up our reverse ladder in order to make that work out. We have a couple of reverse ladders. We only have three, two, one, four, three, two, one, and five, three, two, one. You could make more, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but these are the only ones I use. This adds up to six, this adds up to 10, this one adds up to 15. But of course we have both sides, so we would have six on each side, 10 on each side, 15 on each side. And I ran out of room there, so I'm gonna make it over here is gonna be 12, 20, and 30. Let's say that we picked three, two, one. Then we would need to take our 120 reps total and divide it by 12, which would give us 10 sets. 
yeah, I know this is super nerdy and mathy, but this is kind of the way that you need to be doing this type of training math if you want to understand what you're talking about. We took our reverse ladder. We had 16. We just assumed a starting point for the sake of the demonstration. Five sets of five, four, three, two, one. We figured out what the work capacity was. We just added up how many reps that was. 15 on each side, a total of 30 times five sets gave us 75 reps on each side, gave us 150 total reps. We took that 150 total reps, we multiplied it by 16, which was our weight. That gave us our work capacity, 2,400 kilograms for this specific type of training. Then we wanted to figure out how to make it into 20K. We took our 2,400, we divided it by 20, that gave us 120 reps would be equal in work capacity to the 150 reps at 16. Then we picked which reverse ladder format we wanted to be in. We took the total number of reps of that, which was 12, and we divided it by 120 reps. That gave us 10 sets. If we wanted to do it for the other ones, it would be 120 divided by 20, which would be six sets and 120 divided by 30, 20, 30, 30 times 30, so that's four sets. So those are the three options of what you would have, 10 sets at three, two, one, six sets at four, three, two, one, or four sets at five, four, three, two, one, in order to be the same as this, mathematically. Is that actually true? Absolutely not. The heavier weight is always harder. So if you were at a sticking point and you couldn't complete this workout, then you would really want to be sub that number of sets. And you would probably pick a 60 or an 80% of that number of sets. So I would pick the 120 reps divided by 12 would give me 10 sets and I would drop the sets down to give us time to build back up into that weight. This has been a math nerdy thing. I hope I answered the viewer's question. If this is not clear, keep asking me and we'll keep talking about it because this is something that trainers should definitely know. What weights and what rep schemes are equivalent so that you can design your program to not kill people, but to get people more success over time. Find the work capacity, divide by the weight you have, balance it out to find the number of sets. It's simple when you say it like that, but you're probably gonna need a whiteboard to do it or a piece of paper and three colors of pen. None of the math is advanced. All you're doing is finding one number and then balancing the equation on the other side. Once you balance that equation, you go down in sets because you don't actually wanna to jump to a higher equivalent weight.